Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. This ain't the smoothest wagon trail I ever seen, but it'll save us a couple of hours going cross country this way. Don't worry about me, Will. I'll be all right. Uh, it's just I don't like the looks of that storm. Not this time of year. There's a lot of snow in them clouds. You think we can beat the storm to the line shaft? Ought to. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Come on, you. Uh, yeah. As soon as we get to the top of this rise, you'll see it. Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh! It's burned. Every last stick of it burned. Will, what are we going to do? Some hunter, some drifter may be left to fire without sanding it, and now it's gone. I guess the only thing is to head for Dodge, then. Well, we'd be driving all night. Well, we can't stay out here, Will. We've got to find shelter. I know. There must be a ranch house somewhere. There's just one that I know of. Well, then let's... No. No, we ain't going there. We don't have much choice, Harmony. Will, I couldn't. I just couldn't. Harmony, that's the only ranch within 15 miles of drive. Four hours more in this wind and cold might just be too much. Like I say, Harmony, we just don't have no choice. We're heading for the ranch. It's a good thing I towed it in all that stove wood, Mr. Jones. We're going to need plenty of it for morning. Yeah, it'll be a real cold night, it sure looks like. Snow keeps on there, so it's going to be two foot deep on the level. You know, if you don't take your boots off that stove, you're going to have two feet on the bare ground, Chester. What are you talking about? Chester, the soles are starting to smoke. Now take them off the stove. <laughs> I declare, Mr. Dillon, I thought I smelled something burning in here. <laughs> <laughs> the stove's red hot. Yeah, well, at least my feet's warm for the first time in two days. No. Say, I think maybe I'll rub them with color. Leather ought to soak it up real good, being hot that way. And I... Evening, Matt. Oh, oh Kitty, Kitty, come on in. Oh, it's cold out tonight. Oh, stand there by the stove and burn with Chester. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stay, Matt. I got to get back to Long Branch. Oh, big crowd tonight? Yeah, but quiet one. Men get sentimental at Christmas time. Yeah. Oh, I'm that way myself, Miss Kitty. Yes, yeah, so am I, Chester. I, I was thinking earlier this evening what it was like when I was a little girl. We used to always... It was a long time ago. Uh, why don't you stay a while, Kitty? Let Sam run the place tonight, huh? Well, the boys sort of need me, Matt. To talk to them and laugh with them. Even though they're thinking of somebody else at the time. Well, yeah, I know, but... Oh, uh... I don't mind. It's kind of nice to be needed by somebody. What I was thinking, though, Matt, later, around midnight, maybe the three of us could get together... Make some hot rum, maybe? Oh, that's a good idea, Kitty. By jing, it is. And maybe I could even get Mr. Jonas to wrestle up some chess. <laughs> good, Chester. Then I'll be counting on it. <laughs> I'll, uh, come here if it's all right. Fine. I'd kind of like to get away from the long branch later tonight. <laughs> okay. Oh. How are you, Mr. Beaker? Oh, good evening. I'll see you later, Matt. All right, Kitty. Come on in, Jethro. You look like you can stand some warming up. Marshal Dillon, I got some trouble out at my place. Oh, what kind of trouble? I've been invaded, attacked on my own property, shot at. 
Look at that there hat. Well, that bullet come much closer, you'd have been shot, not shot at. Who was it, Jethro? Couple coming through in the wagon. They took over my barn. Won't let me put a foot inside. Well, what do you mean, a couple? You mean a man and wife? How do I know if they're man and wife? Well, maybe they just want shelter from the storm. Marshal, I don't care what they want. They took possession of my barn without so much as a buy or leave. And I want them to throw it out of it. Tonight. Well, can't we leave it till morning, Jethro? Will Ross ain't spending the night on my property. Will Ross? Well, is your daughter with him, Harmony? Marshal, I got no daughter. Well, you did up until two years ago when she married Ross and you threw them both off the place. Well, the last time I got no daughter. You had one for 19 years, Beaker. You know me for a man of my word, Marshal. And I'm telling you this. If you don't ride back out there with me right now and get them two off my property, I'm going to burn that barn down with them inside it. Chester. Yes, sir. You better saddle up a couple of horses. I don't see any wagon, Jethro. They hauled it inside the barn. The last time they burned the coal oil stove in the tack room. I got a fire going in the blacksmith's forge. Well, it's a cold night. Well, charcoal and oil cost money. Come on out of there, Ross. I got the law with me now. Jethro, if I'm going to handle this, I'll handle it my own way. Now, you stay right here. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Oh, don't you go easy on them. I want them to treated like any other criminals. We make mighty good targets again in this snow, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, I guess we do at that. I think the wind's dying down may not turn into a blizzard after all. Mr. Dillon, I just don't like the idea of walking right into a gun. Well, well, Ross. Who is it? Who's out there? It's Matt Dillon. How'd you fire, Will? You stay back. I'm warning you, Marshal. I just want to talk to you, Will. Now, come on, open up the door. It's cold out here. Is old Jethro with you? No. Just me and Chester. Well, you can come in alone, Matt. You leave your gun out there with Chester. All right, open up. Here, Chester. Hang on to this. I just don't like this one bit, Mr. Dillon. Well, we've got no choice. Hurry up, man. Uh, welcome home, Will. You took a big chance walking up here like that. No, I doubt it. You wouldn't have shot anybody in cold blood before. I don't think a man changes that much in two years. Not unless he's pushed hard enough. Maybe. Uh, I take that gun now, Will. You said you just wanted to talk. Yeah, I do. But not over a gun, son. I hand it over. No, now stay back, Matt. Or... No. <clears throat> now, like I said, Will, a man doesn't change that much. No. No, I guess not. I wouldn't even have shot old Jethro. I figured that. We didn't aim to stop here, Marshal. We was trying to make Dodge and the storm come down on us. A man takes shelter where he can. I wouldn't even ask him for a drink of water. Not after the way he treated us when we got married. But we just didn't have no choice. Where's Harmony, Will? She's in the tack room. It's warmer there. I, I made up a bed for her with some straw and blankets. A bed? You better go talk to her, Marshal. She'll be right glad to see you after all this time. All right. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? You stay here with Ross. I'll be right back. All right, Mr. Dillon. Well, how you been making out, Will? Harmony? Who is it? Matt Dillon. Oh, Matt. Well, what's going on here, young lady? Oh, everything, Matt. We're in trouble, real trouble. Oh, I 
see. It'll be any time now, I think. I... Uh, 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 don't you worry, Harmony. I, I'm going to get some help out here right now. Uh, don't you worry. Everything's going to be all right. You get out of my barn and off my property, Ross. And take that woman of yours with you. Jethro. I told you to stay outside. I'll remind you these is my own premises, Marshal. We'll worry about that later. Chester. Yes, sir? Go get Doc out here fast. Well, what'll I tell him? Is Miss Harmony took down sick? Not exactly. What? Just get riding. It, yes, sir. I'll get him. I'll get him right away. We are. The cat is boiling again, Doctor. It certainly is. It'll only be a minute now. <laughs> oh, there's nothing like a nice hot toddy on Christmas Eve. Uh, oh, yeah, or any time. <laughs> or any time. <laughs> yeah. How right you are, Dr. Adam. You know, since Mr. Prudlin passed on, this time of year has seemed very lonely to me. Oh, yes. Well, I always admired your husband, Mrs. Prudlin. He was a fine man. Generous to a fault and kind and so thoughtful. Oh. Now, there you are. Oh, thank you. Just taste it. Uh. See if I've laced it enough with brandy. With brandy? Yes. Uh. Oh, oh. <coughs> oh, oh, my. Oh, my. That's good. <laughs> yeah, Whew. That's very good. Uh, so, you know, Mrs. Fredlin, I nearly forgot the reason for my call this evening. <laughs> oh, I, I'd hoped it was just social. Oh, well, in a sense, it's business. But in a greater sense, it's the spirit of Christmas. Your bill. Oh. Oh, as a very small gesture of my affection and esteem, I, I tear it up. <laughs> Why, Dr. Adams, how sweet. I hope you won't think me familiar or forward. It was only meant as a small indication of my regard. Dr. Adams, would you care to join me here on the settee? It might be warmer here, closer to the fire. Yeah, well, oh, yes, when I come to think about it, there, there is a chill in the air tonight. <laughs> Oh, well, sit still. I'll answer it. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Prudlin. Excuse me, but it's dark here. No, oh, my gracious. Oh, yes, he is. Won't you come in? Thank you. Doc, I, I've been looking all over town oh, for you. Oh, well, why did you have to find me? Hmm? Oh, never mind. Never mind. What is it you wanted? Well, it ain't me that wants you, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon, well... What's the matter with him? There ain't nothing the matter with him. He he just wants you out of the Beaker Place right away. He told me to bring you back. Oh, but the, this is Christmas Eve. Well, my gracious life, I know well, that. Well, I... Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, Mrs. Prudlin, thank you for a wonderful time. And I hope you won't think ill of me for rushing off. Duty calls, Doctor. I understand. Uh, Some men can afford to be selfless. And you are one of those men. Mrs. Prudlin, I want you to know that Come I on, think you... Doc, Mr. Yeah. Dillon is waiting. I'm coming! Good heavens, Chester man's got to be polite, doesn't he? Another... Oh, that's... Mm. Yeah. Good night, Mrs. Prudlin. Good night, Doctor. Yeah. Come on, Chester... Matt, I'm scared. Easy now, Harmon. Will and Chester will be back any minute, and they'll have Doc with them. Why don't they hurry? It won't be much longer now. They've got to hurry. They've just got to. Harmony, it's going to be all right. Why Why couldn't Chester have gone alone? Why did you send Will with him? If he stayed here, your father and him would have been at each other's throats. 
Where is Pa? Out there keeping the forge burning, heating up water. <laughs> I'm looking sicker but a minute. Why did it have to happen here, Matt? Take it easy. If, if only I had something to hold on to. Maybe if, if you'd give me your hands. Sure. There you go. A baby's first look at the world ought to be all love and joy. Not like this. Not with Pa hating us like he does. Ah, no, Harmony. He does. He he hates us, Will and me both. Maybe not as much as he puts on. Uh, Matt. You're right, I think. Uh, what do you mean? It's not going to be much longer. It... Take it easy now. If Doc doesn't get here, you... You'll stay with me. You'll help me, won't you, Matt? What? Yeah, sure, sure I will. I'll, I'll do what I can, but... Well, he'll get here, though. Doc always makes it. I hope so. I hope so, Matt. But I'm afraid he's going to... All right, all right. Now, what's all this fuss about? Oh, Doc. Yeah, it's a fine time of night to drag a man out in the snow. Yeah, can't see why you didn't plan this thing at a decent hour, young lady. Hey, Doc, I'm scared. Yeah. Oh, Phil Sticks. Not a thing to worry about. <sighs> Women were having young uns long before you and I were even born. Hurry, please. Oh, no, no. You settle back there. You quit worrying. I'll tell you when it's time to worry. Uh, Doc, do you, uh, you mind if I... Uh... <laughs> well, man. Well, look at you. You're as white as a sheep. Well... Oh, you thought you were going to have to take over by yourself, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, well, all right. You go on out there and tell that old buzzard to heat up some more water. He, he hasn't got half enough. All right, Doc. Yeah. And then you stay off him underfoot, will you, Matt? Because uh, me and Harmony's got work to do. <laughs> Young fella, welcome to the world. It's still cold, Mr. Dillon. Stop snowing, though. Clear as a bell. There you are, Mr. Beaker. Mm. Better put some more wood on that forge, I guess. The fire's down pretty low. Uh, so's my wood pile. It's a fool waste trying to heat a barn in midwinter. I'll cut enough to make it up before we leave. <laughs> one thing sure, Jethro, we ain't going out beholden to you. You always was a fine one for talk. And mostly, I can back it up. Well, you didn't with Harmony. We don't need your old man's farm, you said. We'll have us one twice as big, you said. Well, we ran into bad luck. Oh, sure you did. You come crawling back with your tail between your Not legs. Not to you, we didn't. We got caught here tonight by accident. Bad luck, accidents. That's all you was born for. Just what I told Harmony when she defied me and up and married you. Is that so? Now, you listen to me, Jeff. All right, that's enough. Now, settle down, both of you. Well, I didn't give you back your gun just to have you start another argument. I'm sorry, Marshal. I... I'm just kind of on edge, I reckon. Well, you know, Marshal, I'll remind you that all of your trespassers are on my property. I thought we settled that, Beaker. I'm here because you asked the law in, remember? Well, you sure ain't done nothing. Force of circumstances. Huh. They'll leave as soon as your daughter's able to. Now, you can count on that. I got no daughter, Marshal. Well, anyway, while they're here, you're going to keep the peace. Well, there ain't no law in talking. There is if the talk leads to violence. And just remember that Harmony and Will don't like putting up with you any better than you like putting up with them. Yeah. Yeah. Real high and mighty, ain't they? Without a roof over their heads. Well, a lot of folks might figure that makes you look worse than them. Hey, what kind of talk is that, Marshal? Well, a ranch this size, a big house on it, and a man your age trying to work it all by himself while his own kin roam the countryside. Some folks might figure a man like that's got a lot of meanness in him. I told her what to expect if she married this fella. 
You know, a man might tell somebody most anything when he's mad, Jethro, but it's plain stubbornness that makes him stick to it afterwards. Why, they come sneaking into my barn like bandits, Marshal. Didn't even knock on my door. And now you're saying I have to go crawling to it. I didn't tell you what you ought to do. It comes to that, though. And I ain't doing it. Don't you worry, Jethro. We don't want no part of your ranch. And it ain't being offered to you. I worked mighty hard to make this place what it is. A little peace and quiet out here wouldn't do the patient any harm, you know. How is she, Doc? Is she... Is she going to be all right? Well, she's fine. And so is the young'un. <laughs> She'll live to have a dozen more. And he'll grow up and probably come to a bad end, like being a marshal or country doctor. <laughs> now, young lady, uh, I'll be back in the morning, so you get yourself some sleep. All right, Doc. What would you tell my father? No, if you've got any telling to do, you tell it yourself. Pa? Pa? Well, answer, you old coot. She's talking to you. Uh, yes. What is it? Pa? Will you come in here and say howdy to your grandson? Grandson? My grandson? Of course he's your grandson. My golly, I, I hadn't thought of that. It's my grandson. I don't know now, Jethro. You just got through claiming you didn't even have a daughter. Huh? Oh, confound it, Marshal. You're trying to put words in my mouth. Of course I've got a daughter. And a, and a grandson. And as fine a boy as you could ask for. Say, say, Will. Yeah? Uh, I'd be much obliged if you'd shake hands and uh, kind of forget things, huh? I can't see no reason not to, Jethro. Good. Good. Well, come on, Will. Let's look him over. By golly. Grandson. <laughs> Crazy old fool. Young one's born every day. It's nothing to get all worked up about. Who you fooling, Doc? Nobody. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? Huh? Head back to town? Might as well. They'll probably have some ups and downs yet, but I, uh, I guess the four of them will be able to work it out now. Yeah, they'll spoil that kid rotten. Ah. Turned out to be a fine night after the snow quit, didn't it? Look at those doggone stars. Hmm. Hey, Doc, uh, why don't you come by the office when we get in town? Huh? Kitty's going to be there. We thought we'd have a little something to drink and sit around and oh, talk a while. Oh, that sounds fine. But it's putting at 4 o'clock in the morning, Mr. Dillon. That's right, Chester. Well, Miss Kitty won't still be waiting up. <laughs> you want to bet? Gunsmoke has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.